Now, there are certain design considerations that every architect has to take into account when creating a volcano layer, as we see here, or any other structure. First, at the most basic level, you need to deal with line balance and repetition. Now, each of these elements, line balance and repetition, are identical to how we dealt with them in terms of two-dimensional art, as well as in terms of sculpture. When we deal with scale and proportion, this is scale referring to the size of a building in relationship to the size of an average human. So, when we look at a structure to get a sense of grandeur and awe, we have to build it on a level that's going to be considerably larger than your average human. And this could have a lot of impact. For example, take a bungalow home versus the Burj Dubai. The bungalow seems perfect and intimate as a home for a couple of people. Whereas if one or two people lived in the Burj Dubai, you'd have to deal with the fact that Tom Cruise is always climbing up the side of it, mucking up the windows, and then you have to hire a new window washer, and it's just a mess. But you wouldn't want to be, you know, the only person living in the Burj Dubai. It's just too much space. It would become uncomfortable. But then again, I wouldn't want to run a major business out of a bungalow because it just doesn't have the space for it. So we need to take that scale into account. In terms of proportion, there are a lot of proportions that people like, two to one, for example, but the one that draws our attention the most is this one, the golden ratio, 1.618 to one. And we see this in a lot of buildings from the Parthenon in Athens to the human form. And this number is the ratio that we would use in describing, for example, the features of the human face the length of each of your knuckles on your hand. Each one is, as you move from the tip of your finger back, 1.618 times longer than the one prior to it. It describes the height to the width of your eyes, the height to the width of your nose, etc. So, very key number that we see in a lot of structures. Now, we also have to deal with the relationship of parts and frequently, this will be a mathematical relationship of parts of a building, especially when we come to churches where they will try and use sacred numbers, numbers that they draw from the Bible, and incorporate them into the structure in such a way that it's going to make it more sacred or more holy to the people who are worshiping there. We also have to deal with context. So the architect should always take into account the surroundings of the building that they're creating. For example, I don't want to put a big ugly warehouse on a beach. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. It would be a waste of the space. Now context also affects scale. For example, if I'm building a skyscraper and I put it in the middle of Chicago or Dubai, it makes perfect sense. If I put it in the middle of Whitewater, that's going to be a problem because it just wouldn't make sense if I put a 20-story tower in the middle of Whitewater where the next tallest structure is about three stories off campus. However, there are exceptions to this rule, mostly religious, because we can have a cathedral, especially Gothic cathedrals, that will tower over everything else in the town. If this were anything else, if this were an office complex, a sports arena, anything, it would seem out of place. It wouldn't make any sense. But because it's a church and the role of the church at the time in medieval Europe, it makes perfect sense for the cathedral to tower over everything in its surroundings. Now, the landscape can also be altered simply by the addition of the building. In the case of the cathedral, the landscape for 30 miles, 20, 30 miles around is altered because you can't help but, if you're heading into the town, seeing this cathedral from a great distance. In some cases, you can build a structure that's meant to fit the environment, such as Falling Water in Pennsylvania by Frank Lloyd Wright. 
Now, this is not meant to hide. It's not meant to seem as if the building doesn't exist. Don't mistake camouflage for context or fitting the environment. In this case, it's supposed to fit in, feel like it should be there. So when you look at it, the color of the stone that Wright uses, for example, is the same as the color of the stone we see everywhere else. So this stone matches this stone. These heavy horizontal lines mimic the geology in the area where we have a lot of slate in Pennsylvania. And these heavy verticals, such as we see here, mimic the trees that we see in the background. So they're simply trying to fit it in. This isn't always the case. You get McMansions in the middle of the woods and that, that doesn't fit anywhere. But architects should try and fit the building to the environment.